Young lady, you don't fool me one bit. I'm not trying to, but I bet I could, though. I can be smart when it's important, but most men don't like it. I have no more campaigns to run. I know because I won both of them. The supreme art of war is to subdue the enemy without fighting. Those skilled at making the enemy move do so by creating a situation to which he must conform. They entice him with something he is certain to take, and with laws of ostensible profit they await him in strength. I want to quote Robert Greene what he says, seduction goes beyond just man and woman relationships, especially if you want to be a person of power, you want to be in business. Hey friend, welcome to my channel, Kareen Alude, where we talk about everything and I'm Kareen Alude. If you're not yet part of the Friendship Circle, please be sure to like, subscribe. Please be sure to turn on your notification bell so you can always know when I post a new upload. Now let's get into this video. So today we are talking about the eight tips on how to seduce the world and always be taken seriously and be seen as a power figure. The he says in The Art of Seduction, which was our past book club video, check out our book club videos. Technically, this would be a book club video, but we're not really focused on Robert Greene, Art of Seduction. But like he said, the world is your stage. It's literally your oyster. Practice seduction and just your daily life. And seduction doesn't mean overtly, you know, sensual and intimate. It, it's, in a, it's an extension of charm, being charming, charismatic, being likable. And if you're, especially especially in the industry. If you want to get into that world and not just uh, YouTube, but movie, acting, modeling, influencing, lawyer, doctor, public speaker, uh, there's some careers that does require you. Like an accountant doesn't really need to know how to seduce the world or anything like that. But if you're a lawyer, you got to be a sweet talker. You got to be able to train your client on how to win over the jurors and to create that doubt. And this is why there's effort that is taken into how someone dresses when they go to trial, et cetera. If you're a doctor and you own your own, you know, practice and everything, there's people want to feel trusting and inviting. You want to create an environment that's trusting, inviting, even when you speak. My friend, my best friend, when she was pregnant, dropped a doctor that she had just because she didn't like the vibe in there and she didn't like the way the people didn't care, etc. And then she went to another doctor. She went just simply off of the vibe. And I want you watching to be careful of the vibe you exude. The quote I want you guys to remember throughout this video is that you can catch more with honey than you can with vinegar. So the first tip that I have here is how you look and present yourself. This is self-explanatory, of course, the number one rule of seduction, no matter what field, even if it's a person that you're specifically trying to seduce, or if it's in your work field and you want to create an environment, how you look is very key. Find the right role for yourself. Don't fake or force anything you are not. And by this, what I mean to say, do you want to be the manic pixie girl? Do you want to be the bombshell? Everybody wanted to be the bombshell siren type and I'm like not everybody is a siren okay some people can just be the spoiled pampered princess the regal queen or the motherly nature one or the damsel in distress or you know bombshell and even for men not everybody can be you know prince charming some were meant to be rakes some were meant to be you know, different roles that we talk about and you have to find what is natural for you in the seduction and pursuit of a relationship or just your daily life. What characteristics fill you up the most? If you're going to be the cool, nerdy type that's into like, you know, technology, Naruto, anime, <laughs> like if that's what you like, find your niche and stick to it and let it be natural. and. Find a way to be presentable and cute in society with what you like. No one is saying to be seductive or powerful, you must fit this, you know, narrative and dress a specific type of way. No one is saying that. If you're more the Maryland seductress type, that's the outfits, that's the look that works for you. And if something works for you, leave it at that. There was a time I used to do different hair colors all the time. You guys used to see that when I first started this channel too. And on my level up growth femininity journey, I realized hair that is closer to my skin tone 
definitely goes a lot better with me. Even in my home, the way I decorate it, I make sure everything goes with my skin tone and everything is in synchrony. The colors I wear, the styles of dresses and choices has to make sense with my personality. Trying to dress or present yourself as something you're not will come off fake and unnatural and people will kind of see through that. If you ever watch a, a show, a talk show, or even a YouTube channel and you're watching and like, I don't know, something's off with this person. I'm just not really vibing. They're looking like they're trying to be something and you can kind of see through all the giggles and smiles and oh my God, and you're like, yes, it's okay. That is a role that they're putting on that your mind, our subconscious can always pick up when something is not natural. So as far as your dress, there's some people that just, your outfits got to make sense with your personality. But it goes beyond what you wear. It's how you present yourself. Grooming. Pay attention to your own well-being. This includes both your physical and mental well-being. If you're not at your best, you won't give off a very powerful presence. Eat well exercise enough to stay in shape and get the sleep your body needs to function. Taking care of your mental and emotional health can be tricky, but but in general, you should take time to relax and reconnect with the people and things that are important to you. Don't get so caught up in chasing power that you let the quest consume you. Make an effort, you know, during the panini pan pandemic when everything was shut down, I gained about 40 pounds. I was sitting on a chair a lot and I did not feel confident. And though I'm slowly and healthily, I don't believe in rapid weight loss, I have started losing the weight. It's a moment that I had to myself where I caught it when clothes stopped fitting well and I started buying sizes that were up. I was like, Kareen, are you comfortable with this? And it's not about anything with plus size or anything like that, like I wouldn't be comfortable plus size, but it's what I was eating and how I was treating myself. You can always tell those who love themselves just by how they eat. And knowing that these foods, though it looks delicious, it's scrumptious, makes me feel very bloated, it makes me feel tired, I get the itis or I get a sugar rush, it's not good. I know it's not good for me. Why am I doing this to myself? I want to be a well-oiled machine. It's like if you buy a luxury car, you buy a Rolls Royce or a Bentley and you're putting the cheapest gas you can find, you're, it needs an engine change and you go get the cheapest engine change that you could find. The car is not gonna function at its optimum you know, peak or whatever. Like I found when you have a luxury car, you can't just take it to any garage. They won't even have the software to fix what's wrong with your car, you know? Having a windshield, something as simple as a windshield. When I tell you guys, luxury cars is not where it's at, okay? Always have yourself a little cheap car too. You can have a luxury car for you, for your accomplishments when you're going to events, exactly. Like, yeah, you know, I, 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 I have my car for that, but there's no need for five, six cars. When I have my little Mercedes Benz, I got a chip on my window, like something, a branch fell on it or whatever, or something. I don't know what it was, but it was a storm in Florida. And to go get that fixed, I was like, let me just go to a garage that I usually went to when I had my little Honda Civic, you know? And they're like, sorry, we don't have the software to fix your windshield. I was like, software for what? And I was like, yeah, your car uses a certain software. We'd have to sync it. You'd have to take it to the Mercedes uh, Maison is how we call it in, in Creole. I don't know the English term Maison, meaning warehouse or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Like I said, I think in Creole. And they cost a lot more. And I was like, what? And I use that to see as ourselves. Do you see yourself as high quality? Can you eat whatever? Can you just drink whatever? Can you go wherever? Can you speak however? How you present yourself goes beyond clothes. It's how you speak too. Are you exercising daily? If you have the chance, I try to get 30 minutes in, you know? I'm trying to drink water, making it a habit to try to sleep. You're not always gonna get it right. There are days I try to sleep early and I end up in bed at two. Does that mean I just give up on trying to sleep early the next day? No, I always still work and try to master sleeping early because sleep is my biggest problem. I'm not recovering from my workouts, but you know that and you try 
try to give yourself this aura. Yes, be well polished and all of these things, but taking care of your inner self will show on the outside. When you love yourself and present yourself well, even when others are not looking, it will show on the outside, you know? And also do not neglect your mental health, how you present yourself mentally. Someone can be well groomed, well put together, and then mentally, I love Auntie Wendy. Y'all know I always, I'm always showing Auntie Wendy love, but it's unfortunate that no matter how well kept she is, when she was recording her show, if she would slip up in a way where it's like, mm, people kind of catch on mentally, is Wendy there? And then it creates this whole spiral. So it goes to show you can look the part, you can look amazing, feel, uh, dress amazing, but if you're mental, you're not keeping that in check, checking in with yourself, you know, going to therapy, um, managing like how you feel, it also will make people not really take you serious in the power that you have. So second point is, are you valuable? Do you provide something that people need? It can be inspiration, envy, respect. What emotions do you bring out of others? What I mean by this is what good. I say do not go into trends, right? And it's with your career and school, whatever. When you go to college, I told you guys, don't go just to go. Go for something you're genuinely passionate about because then you will bring value to it. It's like starting a channel and then you see, oh, a couple channels are popping. Let me get in a relationship so I can start a couple channel. But that's not really something you're passionate about or whatever. Or let me start a makeup tutorial channel when you know you don't dream about makeup or stay up hours finding out how to make your liner look this way or that or whatever. You know, what do you genuinely like to talk about? Because then it will generate a passion and you will have value because people will watch you knowing that I'm going to learn something about X, Y, Z. This person's of value to me. They help me in this way when I watch or, you know, so on a smaller scale in your life, there are friends that you hang around that drains you, that you feel like they don't really add value to my life. How, start evaluating people in your life. How do they make you feel when you get around them? Do you feel like, oh my God, we're about to be lit. We're about to be da-da-da-da. Are you that friend? I used to be that friend. Now I'm a workaholic. So I used to be the friend every time they're doing a party. Crane has to come to the party because even if it's my friend's house that's it's been hosted in, I'll take over. I'll be the host. I'm very walking around. That was me. I'll make people start dancing, playing music. I have cool games. That was the aura that I brought around my friends, you know, now not so much adulthood, but it was a value. They knew this is Korean, but also now, especially with me and my best friend, when we want to talk finance or we want to talk future and stuff like that, this is more of the value we bring to each other to where it's like, okay, the friendship is not just gossip. It's not just fights. It's not just this, but we're both on the grind talking about our futures, finances, recipes, etc. I bring value in the workforce, you know, in the workforce, what do you bring to the company? What can you do to change a company? Not just change a company, but are you needed? Are you making yourself an asset? Because once you stop being useful, stop being an asset, your power starts to want. People got to know this person is the go-to or go for this. That's why I always say it's better to be a master of one than a master of none and you got your legs all many different places master one thing you know don't hop around to different things make yourself valuable in one place and then you can explore other things because that starts to bring power to you when you associate that in a micro scale in the home in your marriage in your relationships what value do you bring to the relationship is it a fight every time you guys link up is it an argument is it you know dry conversations do you cook a meal every now and then whether male or female okay because men aside from this what are you bringing to the relationship and marriage too women aside from your looks what else are you bringing you know and i guess i will say what do you bring to the table but in a sense equal parts for each other do how do i make you feel in this relationship you can ask your partner when you're coming home are you like <sighs> taking a deep breath before you walk in because it's like 
I don't know what I'm going to get today, but let me just, are you scared to talk to your spouse, you know, or is it a, oh, I can't wait to get home. I want to see what she cooks or what he cooks. I can't wait for us to sit and watch a movie or this. Like, do you bring value with your presence no matter where you're at? Once you start bringing value with your presence, you start being powerful. Value is also what emotions do you bring out of people? Whether it could be women, when women see you, jealousy is an emotion. And trust me, women are weird in this way. When there's jealousy, they kind of start to copy you. So I think jealousy is, is a form of flattery. You know, it's that, wow, you're something I aspire to be. And I hate that I'm not that. So I hate you for it. And I'm jealous and I hate what you're getting, you know, and evoking that emotion from someone automatically puts you at the top, period, and you have the power. Because they know, they're aware that they're just jealous, but they probably blocking it, trying not to tell themselves that, but you are their superior once someone is jealous of you, you know? Envy, this is why people flex their cars and all of this to be seen as power. But there's quiet envy, just the prestige you have, the clout you're getting, the recognition at your job, you know, when you get that promotion and people are looking like, you just started six months ago. What is it about this girl? Automatically, the power starts coming up. So what you evoke in people, if you're constantly smiling and you're soft, you're delicate around people, you have a calm nature. When people come around you, they'll be like, she has a calm presence. I like being around her. She's always smiling, unproblematic, lovely energy. You know, people tend to want to be around you more. But if you're always, da -da -da -da, did she just get me in the line? Da -da -da, don't mess with me. Like it's robust. It's boisterous. It's loud, vulgar. People know she has a very chaotic energy energy, chaotic spirit. She's always fighting. She's always yelling. She's always beefing. And you will attract like-minded people. You will attract the dustiest of the dusties. Okay. So start formulating your energy and start telling yourself, what emotion do I want to evoke in people? And if I want to evoke this emotion, then I must become a chameleon to this emotion. If I want to evoke calmness and peace i must become calm and peaceful and i must do things daily like i always have a candle lit in my house i'm recording now but there's always music that's playing or the sounds of birds i'm weirdo i love the sounds of birds and the sound of the ocean so i'll play it all out even if the tv is on i always have something else in the background playing that because i always want to keep my space calm and that's because i came from a place of loud boisterous chaotic spirit and i was like i don't like that energy i don't want people to know me or see me as the girl that's always in the mix always got something going on chaotic energy all of this i wanted to exude calmness so i did things to exude that Third is relatability. If you can win over the people, then you can win over life. You only win over the people by being relatable and not stuck up. Treat people with professional courtesy. To demand respect, you need to be willing to give it. You gotta treat people, especially in the professional world, with professional courtesy. If you're going to an interview, arrive 15 minutes before the time. If you're having a business meeting, 15 minutes. Be prepared, okay? You would want someone to come and be prepared. Imagine you're going to court and your lawyer is not prepared, doesn't know the questions, giving you terrible advice, is not too familiar with your case, you know, all of these things, you would feel some type of way like, what am I paying you for? Or a doctor who's just kind of reading the sheet as they come into the room, because usually doctors, I have a lot of doctor friends and friends that are in med school and nurses and you know, all of those in the medical field. and doctors usually read the charts and the patient's information before they even come into the room and ask the nurse for updates etc can you imagine you're in your hospital bed freaking out and that's when the doctor wants to come with your chart and starting to get familiar with your case and then start talking to you you would start to freak out like you don't feel you know when a doctor comes in and says your name hi Kareen how are you doing today I always feel like well <laughs> Hi, doctor. And hi, I'm doing great today. Thank you. I was like, yeah, well, uh, you know, I understand you're here because of blah, 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 blah. So tell me a little bit more about that. This is a whole different impression than, hey, uh, Kareen, how are you doing today? It looks like you uh, have uh, stomach discomfort. Uh, tell me about that. It's like, 
okay, well, you know, and just like in your day to day life, in your relationship, this is what we talk about with common courtesy, treating others the way you want to be treated. You want to, on your anniversary, your spouse to remember, and you're not always the one planning something romantic that they surprise you too. Typically we find that we're always the ones doing for others uh, or in romantic situations. You're buying gifts, you're inviting people out, you're doing this and you're like, okay, it's not being reciprocated. Something's off, even in friendships. I always say this, I hate friends that always have an excuse why you can't be a good friend, you know? Why you can't offer to go hang out sometimes or make time to be a friend. It's like, no, this is not being reciprocated. This is not a, a positive energy. And you, you go and you find where it's being reciprocated. When you're not reciprocating people's energy, this is when people say you're starting to act brand new or you're being fake or you're being, sometimes it's just, you know, people hating but sometimes you gotta evaluate yourself am I reciprocating this energy that this person is giving me or am I not because why are they saying I've changed and I'm acting brand new you got to analyze the situation for yourself because I'm a strong believer not every criticism is coming from a place of hate even in your relationship if your wife is saying hey you've changed I don't understand what's going on the things you used to do you're not doing anymore vice versa if the man is telling you this instead of just getting on the defense and feeling like you're you know god's gift to earth and you could do no wrong instead you'd be like hey have things changed lately am i reciprocating their energy how are they with me did they tell me that they would like or require something of me that i'm not providing that i'm not you know living up to you know just common courtesy whether you're a public speaker a youtuber if you're constantly looking at your comments and someone is saying hey could you not do this and multiple people are telling you this and you just keep ignoring them and doing what you're doing anyways you're gonna see your views decline subscribers decline because it's like you know what i mean your core i'm not talking about one person that want to be rude i'm talking about if your core like you you can go through there's videos i've made where they're like hey we're not feeling this or i didn't like your view on this to the point where it was so was a lot of people and I've had to like recant apologize reevaluate and instead of getting offended and feeling superior and telling everybody whatever it's like do they have a point yes oh my god Kareen why did you say this or why did you do this or whatever and then I just move forward you know after that and the situation's forgotten about it's gone and everybody can move forward but if I keep doing the same thing or keep talking the same way eventually people are just gonna get tired and just be like, this person is just not my cup of tea and they're not, you know what I mean? And even in Zootubers, if you're saying, everybody's like, hey, this person sounds stuck up. A true, well-refined, sophisticated person, it's your mind, it starts here first, it starts here. Yes, groom yourself, present yourself to where you're not smelly, you smell good, your teeth is not super yellow out here, you're ungroomed, unkept, but just being, it's 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 not it's not it okay be relatable people will like people who are relatable this is what american politicians do but like you'll find a lot of people know the power of relatability i'm real i'm human i'm not super this and i'm not looking down at other women um because they're not at the place where i'm at i'm not looking down at other men because they're not they don't know which fork to use or they don't know that da, 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 da. like it's it's just is just tasteless let me say that work well with others if people dread the thought of working with you they'll likely reject the notion of working for you if you have a reputation of not working well with others other people um, just have this reputation that mm, yeah this person is not a team player they're very controlling they're bossy they're this and that and you know I just nobody's gonna want to work with you when you're labeled as difficult in Hollywood your roles your career is pretty much over and it's the same in the law field it's the same like there's lawyers that literally cannot find work because there's so many websites and peer re like and, and places where you can go to review your lawyer before you hire them, previous cases, etc. And if they just have a bad reputation, they did not work well with me, they did that, nobody's gonna wanna hire you. Same with a doctor. If your cases shows that, hey, psh, about 35% of the people he treats 
end up succumbing to their illnesses or diseases. He just keeps them sick. People are going to want to look for more holistic approaches where the reviews are different, where it's like, hey, I was like this, but I changed my diet. That's why holistic uh, market is becoming so popular. Holistic doctors, holistic clinic, clinics are become are booming. People are like, we want real results. People start are able now to review and look at things before they go. It's like a hotel, for instance. If you're going to a hotel, I would hope you'd read the reviews to understand first, A, is this worth a place staying? If you're getting an Airbnb, for instance, read all the reviews. I have time when I get an Airbnb. I will read all the reviews. you purchasing whatever it is, a lotion, whatever. We read reviews. See yourself as a person that when people talk about me, it's equivalent to them reviewing me. You know, if you want to be a powerful figure, your ratings and reviews have to be up there. It's not a, oh, be likable to everybody to the point where you have no personality or character, but understand that working well with others is like, you know, being reviewed. So if you have a history of not being a girl's girl, befriending people just to steal from them or like their ideas at work, like we've seen The Devil Wears Prada and all those other movies where a woman would befriend another woman, steal her work and then blow up from it. And then it's like, yeah, you blew up, you have all of this, but amongst your peers, you have a reputation of not working well with others, being cutthroat, being vicious and doing whatever you have to do to get to the top. And guess what? That will not in the long run help you be successful. And eventually the higher up you get when all of those things come out about you, it will be the harder you fall. Number four, adopt a powerful posture. While it isn't always true, powerful people tend to use expensive body language that takes up more space. This sort of body language can convey confidence to other people, which may make them view you as a more powerful person. Now, I'm not into the whole etiquette thing, but I do believe in powerful posture. When I played sports in high school, I, I did uh, soccer, ran track a little bit. I knew when I was lifting weights and doing cross country, running, my posture naturally, when you lift weights, your spine just aligns to where I was naturally just walking like this, you know, just straight head, chin up. As you gain weight, you get a little heavier, you start to droop a little, and it's so hard to remember to keep yourself up. But there's a difference with me um, talking to you guys like this and then me talking to you guys like this, right? This exudes confidence, this exudes I'm sure of myself, I'm, um, you know, I know what I'm talking about. I am that girl. And when you speak with hand gestures in the business world, I know people who watch YouTube don't like this. A lot of people don't like when I use my hands, but it shows that you're not afraid to take up space in the room, which shows confidence versus when you shrink yourself, you sit in one little corner. It shows a lack of confidence and not always low key and mysterious. Like this person is not too sure of themselves. You can be mysterious. You're not saying a lot about yourself, but you still, you know, your posture is straight. You're making eye contact and you're floating around the room. A lot of times when you go into uh, charity functions or galas or uh, meetings, etc., how your posture looks will determine who walks up to you and talk to you and do all of these things because you exude a powerful posture. Think of Kobe Bryant when he stands up, just how his posture is always, even when he's walking, you know what I mean? And just think of all the power figures that you can think of. Terrible example, Hitler, but you know, when we think of him, he's very, you know, matter of fact, and <laughs> that's a terrible person, but he, that's a great example. He exuded an air of confidence and posture and strength, and his facial expression was very matter of fact, okay? So if you want to exude a, a charming, quiet confidence as a woman, you have a nice posture, you're very confident with yourself, but you can, you know, adorn it with a smile. Your smile is your best accessory, okay? And you have a softer approach. So people will be like, oh, she's confident, she's class, she got power, but she's also approachable, let me approach her. Number five, act powerful before becoming powerful. Doing so will require you to demonstrate fearlessness and a considerable amount of self-confidence. Fake it till you make it, believe in yourself, believe that you are powerful. Believe in yourself, Aff affirm that I am this, okay? Start living the life you want before you get it. Everything I have now, I didn't have before, but I lived like I did, 
I lived like I did. And it even says for a diet, for instance, when you look at someone who's slimmer or have their body shape, you kind of look how they eat and you're like, oh, they portion control really well. Let me start eating like someone who's already a size two, okay? And once you start eating like someone who's a size two, it'll start to show. But if you're trying to be a size two, but you're still eating like someone who's a size hundred, like, oh, but I'm working out this and that, you know what I mean? So if you want to be a rich, live like you're rich. I'm not saying buy money, find out how real rich people live. Check out my finance playlist. Rich people save, invest, rich people network, have multiple streams of income, not just go on yachts and do this and that. Because how do they pay for the yachts? If rich people were having fun all the time, how are they making their money? So once you start living like that, I'm like, let me invest in, let me buy some properties. Let me rent out some things you know then you start to see you attract what you're already living like everything starts like that if you want to be powerful be powerful a powerful person their presence is powerful they're not everywhere okay like you won't see beyonce everywhere you want to see barack obama everywhere he'll disappear and i use that example with like a kanye and jay-z you know kanye is always yapping jay-z is more quiet the level of respect is different, although one is richer than the other and has popularity, yes, but power, I don't know. People, you know, don't disrespect Kanye, but is it at the same place? No, not at all. And it's not about musicality. It's about just your presence got to be expensive. You can't be spotted everywhere. Every club, every weekend, every party, every weekend. Sometimes you got to make yourself exclusive. Disappear a little bit. Make people miss you. Even in relationships with your spouse, like clinging to them all the time, showing you're too available. That turns people off. It's not seductive. It's not charming. But when you're elusive, you have your own life, you have your own things going, you're genuinely busy and you're just, hey, let's schedule this time together. Or let's do this. It's not about, oh, if she don't make the time, people that want you will make the time. Yes, that's true too. But that's also obsessive and clingy in a toxic straight state of mind because do you want someone who's always available for you whenever you need them? Their charm will di be dissipated. And as a woman, we all know that. The man that shows the least interest sometimes when you're young, not a mature adult like myself, because no. But when you're young, the one who shows you the least interest, you tend to want that attention from them, you know? Make yourself expensive. Don't go everywhere. Don't be everywhere. Don't constantly have an opinion, constantly have something to say, constantly just want to be in the mix everywhere you know you want to definitely protect your energy protect your presence and make sure you're exclusive you are expensive be extremely subtle even to the point of formlessness be extremely mysterious even to the point of soundlessness thereby you can be the director of the opponent's fate Number six is shoulder responsibility. When things go wrong, don't point fingers or spend time dwelling on the mistakes that were made in the past. Accept responsibility for correcting the mistakes in the present and make the most out of a bad situation. Many celebrities and politicians bounce back from being canceled simply by taking accountability, apologizing and rectifying their wrong and continuing to work towards their goals. Doubling down when you say something offensive is like, people just like really but those who is just right away listen i apologize this was wrong this is not something i should have said this is not something i should have done i'm gonna move forward once you apologize a powerful person does not keep going back and forth with people once you apologize i said what i said this is the last time i'm speaking on it and i'm gonna keep pushing out my work keep pushing out my content i'm not gonna dwell on this those who want to move on with me will move on with me those who want to stay in the past stay in the past but as for me I'm too powerful, I'm too elegant, too classy to keep going back and forth. I understand you made a mistake, you take accountability, and then you keep it moving. That is a power move. But when you stay dwelling, then you start to look like a people pleaser or you look like things touch you, they phase you. And powerful people are too busy to sit and really think about all of these different opinions like this. Like if in a, in a day, there's not even enough hours in a day 
sometimes I feel just overwhelmed, you know? It's like there's not enough hours in a day. Why would I spend even an hour thinking about everyone's opinions on something that I'm over and I apologize about? You know what I mean? But take accountability. Don't double down when you know you've offended so many people. Just be like, yo, this was a mistake. I'm sorry. I should have never done this. And then move on. People that want to hold on to it, that's their spirit. That's their energy. Leave it there. Number seven, network effectively. Even though you should have a positive reputation with everyone who crosses your path, you should pay special attention to the relationships you have with people already in positions of power. In fact, you should actively seek people in positions of power. And this is why I say go to charity events, go to art gallery showings, network. It's like the A team, okay? Or the Avengers. You need your team of people that is diverse. Everyone needs a nurse friend, a doctor friend, a lawyer friend, uh, a real estate agent friend, someone who does like plumbing and, and you know, fixing houses, etc. You need, if you could get a hairstylist friend, child, makeup artist friend, like just have a friend and diversify your friend groups like you're diversifying your income, okay? Diversifying your assets, okay? See it the same way. Just like you need multiple streams of income to be a millionaire or a person who's financially stable, you need multiple diverse type of friends, not just the same type of friends. Your friends should be able to teach you something all the time. I don't wanna be the smartest person in the room. I don't wanna be the most powerful person in the room ever. I want to walk into a room and be so awed by the amount of power that I just sit there quietly and absorb and listen. Teach me. Networking like that will gradually start to put you in that position to be powerful and elevated. If you're always the smartest person in the room and all of your friends do the same thing, how are you growing or challenging yourself or elevating? A powerful, seductive person knows I must challenge myself daily. I'm in competition with myself. I must know more tomorrow than I know today. And if that's not happening on a consistent plane, then you're stagnant and stagnant is a killer, okay? Last but not least, don't be afraid of making enemies. You really should try to get along with most people, but at the same time, you can't please everyone. Being straightforward without pulling any punches will rub some people the wrong way, but you can't let that knowledge stop you from acting how you need to act. I'm not saying to be a doormat, to be powerful when I say be relatable. Stick to your guns, do what you do too, but you know, have a balance. But you're not gonna be liked by everybody. If today I gain a million subscribers, I know there's at least 10 to 15% of those people subscribed that didn't subscribe because they like me. They're not all gonna like me. Or if YouTube pushes out my video to 15 million people, not every 15 million people will like me, will like my voice, will like my hair. Something about me may annoy them, maybe the topic they don't agree with. And I think we all get caught up on being liked and validated so much that it hurts us to the core when someone disagrees with us. And a person of power understands, I will make enemies. Not everyone will be for me. Not everyone will like me. Not everyone will resonate with me. And that's okay. That's not gonna stop my grind because I'm not gonna focus on the 15%. I'm gonna focus on the 85% that do. If you have 10 people telling you're doing great, but one comes along and just like, girl, blah, 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 throw a lot of salt and hate, are you just gonna be fixated on that one person? Or are you gonna neglect the 10 positive reviews that you got just for one negative review? You know? So in life, see your life as that. It's like if I, I'm gonna have one bad, no one just has a perfect five. If someone has a perfect five, they haven't been lo around long enough. I love this quote, it's my favorite quote of all time. I think if I ever die, I want it on my tombstone. No risk, no glory. That's it. No risk, no glory. To get the glory, you must take a risk. You must do something different. You must stand out, you know? And there'll be people that are against you at first that you'll just have to win over. And that is power. Not doing what everybody else is doing to blend in and be liked, but standing out. Anyone who's ever acquired a mass amount of success did something different. They stood out. 
They went against the grain. They weren't typical. And this is why we subscribe to them. I don't want to make this even longer than what it is. I can do a part two for you guys going more in depth. Comment below if you like these type of videos. If you like the background music you're listening to, link is in my description. Follow me on Instagram, TikTok, everywhere, okay? All of that is in the description. I love you guys so much. Thank you for subscribing, for tuning in. Make sure you leave a comment and share with a friend. Behave yourselves. Until next time. Mwah.